because, man, we got some comments during the scouting combine interviews. You know, we get them headlines. We get them shots. We get them subliminal takes and shots and all that. But let's talk about it right now because I'm going to pull up the quote, actually. Matter of fact, I don't have the quote. I came unprepared today. But y'all could always go on Google, take five seconds to talk about and see, you know, what uh, Ravens GM DeCosta said and what Mike McCarthy said. You could go check that out. But we know what they said, and we're going to debate it right now. Well, both Ravens GM Eric DeCosta comments and Mike McCarthy's comments uncalled for, or was it misconstrued? And whoever want to say, if you want to start us off right now, was it misconstrued or was it uncalled for? I'm going to pass the mic to you to kick us off. Um, you know, I've been highly critical of John Harbaugh for a while now. Um, you, you know, me and Lil, we go back and forth. You definitely, um, Zach as well, go back and forth about the Harbaugh, um, comments. You know, I, I definitely feel like he's overrated as a coach, um, especially after that Super Bowl. Um, and now it's just kind of coming to the forefront, hitting the front office with their accusation, their pickups of the receiver. Um, you know, at the wide receiver spot, Rashad Bateman saying, you know, you don't have to worry about us, worry about eight, don't have to worry about eight. And number eight and us, you know, you should be focused on getting the right guys for the for the scheme, for the, the how do how we operate, how this team works, and doing the best for the strength of the roster. Um, there's a lot of back and forth because it's clearly showing a divide on what the front office, the coaching staff, and the players want, and then nobody's on the same accord, and that's daunting. Who wants to be a part of an organization that clearly doesn't know what's their their roster strength? You know what what receivers they're bringing in to put them in the best positions to win football games. And, um, you know, you've seen it in the play call. You see it in the play call. You see that it's Lamar Jackson or nothing. And, and, and that's that's been their model for the damn near two seasons now, where it almost put Lamar Jackson in jeopardy, getting hurt this season. You know, it put him in jeopardy where he had a contract year, essentially, to really you know, get a big contract. And they put him in a position in harm's way because 95% of the plays is Lamar Jackson, him scrambling, him running the football, him doing all these different things. Um, You know, it, it's interesting how they had opportunities to get receivers. They had opportunities. They had chances to go after receivers. You didn't have to go after the number one receiver in football. They could have. They could have went after Devontae, Devontae Adams if they wanted to. They didn't have to. But they, they had options out there. They could have went after Brandon Cooks. They could have went after weapons at the receiver that they, they could have easily slotted in with a Lamar Jackson and put and get and make it at ease instead of just throwing them Andrews all the time. Instead, you know, and I think that's something that the, the team is – like Rashad Bateman at least – He's showing his frustration about it because you got rid of Hollywood and I was like the number one guy. Then you didn't really give him an option after you got rid of Hollywood. It, it was daunting. And I think that's something that I know Lamar Jackson right now. He's not really talking to the media about anything pertaining to the roster in, in that sense. But you could tell that Rashad Bateman kind of spoke for him, like himself, Rashad Bateman, also probably for the entire roster on the football field because it seems like. All right, bro, you got weapons out here. You're not throwing the football. And also, if you were to complain about the receiving core not doing their job, then what are you doing as a as a general manager, as a front office? What are y'all doing out there that you're saying that the front core, the receiving core, is not doing what it needs to do? It's been like this the same last three seasons. You So something going on up top, if you tell them about us, or he's pointing fingers at John Harbaugh. That's saying, yo, you're not getting the receivers to do what they need to do. You got to call the plays. You're not getting Lamar Jackson to throw the football. So there's something – along the lines where what is happening in this organization that we all thought was this well old machine. We all thought that it was a top franchise. They got everybody not in check, but everybody on the same accord that Rashad Bateman is all here jousting with the GMs, with the ownership, with the order. Like it, it's baffling to see. And Rashad Bateman is young. He ain't, he ain't pro- like, you know, we, we told her earlier about guys who proved themselves, guys who could talk. Rashad Bateman has a problem in anything at the talk, but clearly there's frustration steaming from that that um, the roster, from the players, is there's some type of frustration that's getting everybody not that's got people out of ease, and something's going on, and it's only going to be a matter of time when the full story comes out. But right now, um, you know that was huge news on short because, like I told you a little before, on many occasions, I don't trust Harbaugh with the roster because something's not clicking. When you look at the football field, you all you see is Lamar Jackson, and you have you have to see some type of playmaker from somebody else. But I'm seeing now it may not be horrible. It may be that front office. It, it's it may be a, a plethora of things that's happening right now. That that's that's everything's thrown off. To pick up where you left off about the Ravens, right? Um, I don't think Eric the is lying. I mean, he admitted to poor wide receiver drafting. 
And if you look at the history, the history backs that up. I mean, since he took over the team in 2019, the Ravens have picked four receivers in the first three rounds. Marquise Brown requested trade. Uh, Miles Boykin, round one, 2019. Devin DuVernay, 2020, round three. And with Shaw Bateman, 2021, round, I don't even remember. I think it was round one. Round so one. outside of Brown, none of those wide receivers have produced over 90 catches or 880 yards in the NFL. When Shaw Bateman came into the league hurt, he missed the first five games um, of his NFL career. So off to a bad start. You're not going to get much you know, chemistry with Lamar Jackson if you're coming in half the season. So I think when you go all the way back to 2011, when they drafted a guy by the name of Torrey Smith, round two, that was a most productive wide receiver, okay, back in 2011, over a decade ago. So he hasn't been good at drafting wide receivers. So I think his point was misconstrued because he was owning up to the fact that he drafted poor wide receivers. Now, obviously, if you were Shaw Bateman, you're going to take that a type of way. But at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you this, Zay. Before I get to the Mike McCarthy side of things, right? Because we got to talk about them. I think right now, the Ravens are losing their culture. They was known to be this no BS type of franchise. And now they're losing their culture. And I think a lot of these players, and listen, I might get flagged for saying this, but they are using Lamar Jackson's contract situation as a way to justify their divaness. When you talk about J.K. Dobbins, right, in the divisional round of the playoffs or wild card excuse me when they played the Bengals right and he didn't get the ball he said and I quote paraphrasing here well I should be getting the rock I should be the one getting the looks if Lamar Jackson was there we would not have lost this game okay cool if Lamar Jackson was there you wouldn't be getting the ball either in that goal line situation okay Tyler Huntley would have got that ball or Lamar Jackson would have got that ball just like Tyler Huntley did and who knows if he would have scored a fumble we don't know that all right that was you using Lamar Jackson as a way to boost your ego. I need more touches. Then you have Marlon Humphreys, right? Remember, he was going with, you know, off on the sideline with John Harbaugh. They was going back and forth, right? Because he didn't trust the defense. You had that situation. Now you have this situation with Shaw Bateman. He referenced Lamar Jackson. Don't take a shot at Lamar Jackson and us. When did he quote Lamar Jackson here? The coaster. He didn't. OK, you're using his contract situation as a way to show your divaness. And the team is doing that. They are allowing Lamar Jackson's contract situation. And at the end of the day, that's private. That's Lamar Jackson and that's ownership. They got to come to a mutual common ground. But don't use that situation as a way to justify the divaness of this team. Marquise Brown, I'm not getting targets. I want out. Trade me to Arizona. So I could be the number two when I'm the number one and I'm dropping passes at the same time. How the hell are you requesting a trade and you dropping everything but COVID? Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to leave that there. And as far as Mike McCarthy, I think his point was out of line. Because say what you want about Keller Moore. Let's go back to 2021. That was the best version of that Cowboys team. Dak Prescott stunk it up. But last year, they were leading the league in scoring. Okay, I believe it was like 31 points per game. Okay, um, and the thing I liked about them was they didn't have an identity. They was doing RPOs. They were doing play action. They were passing the ball 30 times. Whatever the game dictated to them, they followed. Like, I remember when they ran the ball 30 times against the Chargers and won that game. I remember when they passed the ball 30 times in another game and won that game. And I liked the creativity of that. When you got this old, outdated West Coast system with no creativity, Mr. Mike McCarthy, you're going to see why you need a killer more. So, yeah, I'm going to take a shot at him. I think his was out of line. I think the coasters was misconstrued. Yeah, Mike McCarthy was way First of all, you just try to throw Kellen Moore on, under the bus. And, you you know, you, you're talking about running the football more. How about you make the decision to start Tony Pollard then? If you want to run the football more, because Ezekiel Elliott is, is not that guy anymore. So, there's your running game. That's that's what that's probably why he's passing the football because you don't want to start Tony Pollard at running back, and let let Zeke be your third down back, goal line back, get them you know punch the touchdowns in. Um, but you know other than that, it's been the passing game has really has been what's kind of you know carried that carried that team. Um, you know you know when when Dak is is healthy, he had a little bit of a down year this year, but. Usually, you know, Dak is is throwing for four thousand yards. Um, so yeah, so now nah, he was he was out of pocket for that. Um, and I think Kellen Moore is gonna have a lot of success. Um, where he's, where he's at now, and it'll probably be a way better situation for him than what he would have had in Dallas. So, um, you know, I wish him the best over there. 
Um, in regards to the Raisin, uh, Ravens, though, Zay, you asked, you said, we, you know, when did it change? It changed when Ozzy Newsom retired. That's when it. That's when it changed. Um, and you know, they the Ravens haven't drafted well at wide receiver. Um, if you if you look back, the last time the Ravens had a legitimate number one wide receiver was when Anquan Bolden was there. That was their last legit number one wide receiver. Um, you know, you mentioned Torrey Smith was one of their one of their better guys, but at the end of the day, Torrey Smith was never a legit number one wide receiver, number two at best, but possibly could have been best served as as the third wide receiver. Since then, they have drafted wide receivers, but none of those guys have been legit wide receivers. I'm gonna hold out um my my judgment on Rashad Bateman because he's he's been hurt. Um, the last uh, two seasons, he hasn't actually been able to stay on the field, so I'm going to reserve judgment on him for later. I'd I like to see him get through a full season first before I just be like, all right, well, that's another pick that they got wrong <laughs> at wide receiver. Um, but they 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 got a lot of they got a lot of issues that they need to fix. Um, I mean, in regards to his comments, his comments was true. What he said was right. It's been a bunch of guys been underperforming. They have not had a legitimate number one receiver, like I said, since Anquan Bolden. And when you look at the top quarterbacks in the league and, and you see the difference from them having a legitimate number one wide, wide receiver and prior to them having that legitimate number one wide receiver, there's a huge difference. We sat up here, and I'm not, not, not saying we, but the media sat up here and tried to don Josh Allen as the next up after Patrick Mahomes. Why? Because we saw the difference in Josh Allen from prior to having Stefan Diggs as his wide receiver. Excuse me, guys. From prior to having Stefan Diggs as his wide receiver to after having Stefan Diggs. We just saw Jalen Hurts go from being somebody who a lot of people were still on the fence about to being an MVP candidate after getting a legitimate number one wide receiver. Everybody not going to be Tom Brady. Everybody not going to be Patrick Mahomes and get MVPs with maybe number two wide receivers as the best wide receivers on your team. Everybody doesn't have those type of abilities. Some of these quarterbacks, you have to put wide receivers in position for them to 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 kind of help. They they'll help each other out. But you haven't given Lamar Jackson a legitimate number one wide receiver. Um, and I mean, right now with everything that's going on with the contract, you better hope. Y'all can work something out so that you actually have an MVP uh, level quarterback on your roster because it's looking real shaky right now. I got one point that I want to add on to that because, you know, you talk about Mike McCarthy's comment. I want to run the damn ball. Well, let's go to it because last time I checked, Tony Pollard is coming off a broken leg. Okay. um, The last time I checked, Ezekiel Elliott, he shot. Like, literally, he got no mileage on his legs. He's only averaging 3.8 yards per carry. So I'm guessing in order for you to run the damn ball, you probably going to have to draft another running back. I'm guessing that's in your plans because I don't know how they're going to do that early on when you talk about Tony Pollard's, you know, unclarity, when you talk about Zeke and his unclarity as well. Who knows if we're going to be back either. And so. on, on top of that, when you, you know, you, you're saying as the head coach, you're saying – I wanted to run the football right now. Look at what's going on on, on in Kansas City. We don't want to give Eric Bieniemy a shot because Andy Reid calls all the plays. So why the hell you can't? You ain't calling all the plays, and as the head coach, if that's how you really felt, like we need to run the football more, and you try to throw Kellen Moore under the bus, you're the head coach. You could easily start calling the plays too. That's crazy. Yeah. But go ahead, Zay. Um, real quick, you know that that Mike McCarthy guy definitely bypassed talking about elongated take about the Ravens. Um, you know, Mike McCarthy has a lot of gall to say what he said about Kellen Moore. Yes. Um, you know, D- Dak Prescott looked the best in his career under Kellen Moore, and um, no one could say differently. And I, now we're about to see Kellen Moore with um with Herbert, and you know, you know, I, I told Lil, we I'm, I'm expecting Herbert to have a sixty a six thousand yard season just because of how much he throws the floor. It's gonna be electric over there in the Chargers, especially with capable running backs all around. Because I I don't understand how much talent this Charger teams has. Because even when um, when um, damn, Keenan Allen went down, and then Mike Williams went down. You saw um, you saw Palmer go off. 
And then you saw another another receiver that came out the woodworks. I don't know if he was a, he was yeah, a section of seven, and he just came on the Carter, came on a football field and and cooking. So clearly, you know, Josh Herbert, Justin Herbert could find guys easily. It's just a play calling. There's a lot of questions in there. Kellen Moore is about to clean it up easily. Um, this new guy with the with the hurt team that the Cowboys have with the shot quarterback and Dak Prescott. This man has a very questionable IQ on the football field. Some plays he looks immaculate in the net. Other plays you're like, what the hell are you looking out looking for out there? Um, it seems like he's better when he's being pressured, which is weird. When when people are let through, he finds people easily. He makes the correct reads. When he has 17 seconds in the pocket, he just throws to the other team. I do not understand that logic. I don't understand how you can't see people when you have nothing but time, space, and opportunity. Um, but I think this is an issue with regarding the the quarterback room. The quarterback coach out there, he needs to be able to talk to the Dak Prescott, make him see things more clearly, make him make it the better reads, the, the better, the better field decisions. Because right now we're seeing Mike McCarthy, I guess, facing a lot of heat and pressure from Jerry Jones, and that's why he's calling out guys now. Before Mike McCarthy's like, you know, everyone's doing great, we're doing fantastic, we're, we're working our way up, making jokes in the press conferences. Now he's pointing, he's playing the flinger game, pointing people who's who's messing up, who's who's doing this, why we ain't doing this, why we not doing that. Jerry Jones is starting to apply pressure because he wants that division title, but he also wants to make a run at the Super Bowl. He knows he has a talent out there. The defense is playing good. The offense is what was lacking, in a sense, in in the in the pressure games, like the games that are the high the, the high market games where the lights are brightest. That's when they they faltered on offense. He wants to see better, and I think Mike McCarthy right now is coaching for his job officially because with him just calling out OCs, that's not Mike McCarthy like until the pressure is on him. So that's something maybe Jerry Jones like, all right, it's time for you to start making things happen because now we have we have all these talent. You know, the checkbook is always open. Somehow, some way, we can't beat the Eagles. We, we lose to the Commanders. We lose to the Giants. What's going on here? They're missing Amari Cooper. That's what's going on. That's the change in their offense when they didn't figure out how to make it work with Amari Cooper, who, again, what I was saying about the number one receivers. If you look at Dak before Amari Cooper got to Dallas and that season and a half following that, that's the reason why he got that $40 uh, million a year deal because Amari Cooper came over and now you had a legit number one wide receiver and then you had CeeDee Lamb on the other side and and and, Dal, uh, and Dak had an uh, amazing year that season. They don't have that no more. Y'all can hear me? All right, good, because I know my audio was out here, um, you know, back. But I would say this, like, if you're the Chargers and you hear Mike McCarthy say all he wanted to do was light up the scoreboard, like, yeah, light up the scoreboard. You know who in my division? The defending champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course I want to light up the scoreboard, fool. I got to go up against them. Sean Payton, he's going to be coaching Russell Wilson. Yeah, I want to light up the scoreboard, right? If the Raiders get a quarterback... I want to lie up the scoreboard. So you like to hear those things. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mike McCarthy may not want to do it. It may be a, a shift in philosophy. Old school, new school. I like the new school. When you look at Sean McVay and his outside zone running scheme with the play action, he won a Super Bowl two years ago. We talk about Andy Reid. Nobody could figure out Andy Reid's offense. Spread out. Spread you out. Nobody could figure that out. Still to this day. Tyreek Hill. Oh, wow, it's hard to stop Tyreek Hill. No Tyreek Hill? Oh, my God, it's hard to stop the Chiefs. Can somebody stop him? No, you can't stop him. It's innovative. So when we talk about it's not 1999 anymore, which is not, that's the name of our show, Mike McCarthy got to realize that. And if you're the Ravens, and this is my last point on that, because to some extent, I feel with Shaw Bateman's pain in a way, because we know they don't use wide receivers like that in this offense built around Lamar Jackson with the utilization of his legs, with the utilization of the tight ends. But still, you are still the number one wide receiver with Sean Bateman. If Devin Duvernay came out and said this, maybe I'll give him some leeway and say, all right, yeah, I can see a little something. But with Sean Bateman, you, you're the number one. Marquise Brown just got traded. That's all incentive for you to be the number one option on this team. Even if they won heavy, you're the number one option. And yet, you hurt, you hurt, and I understand it. There's a report that came out about the facilities. I don't care about that, man. Okay? You're hurt. So you should not be, you know, taking this to, you know, to heart. What you need to do is get back out there and try to put up a 1,000-yard season. And then there's no more talking. 
But as far as the coaster, nah, he owned up to his mistakes. We all should own up to our mistakes. That's how we get better at what we do. So I'm going to cut him slack. And Big Mike over there, shut your mouth. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm done. My night is over. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right, slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question, something you may want to answer, something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.